Reuters, guys, is running with a headline that says the uh, stranded Suez Canal ship has been freed. That's Reuters citing some sources. Of course, we'll be waiting for some confirmation on that. Let's check in with our correspondent, Dan Murphy, who is in Egypt and on the CNBC Newsline. Hey, Dan. Right now, and I'm seeing a pretty significant breakthrough here at the Suez Canal. Rescue operators have been able to partially refloat the Ever Given, which has been stuck sideways in the canal since Tuesday. Look, earlier today, authorities said that the vessel had responded well to push and pull manoeuvres in high tide. And we know they've been using tugs and sophisticated dredging equipment to pump sand and mud from underneath the ship to clear its engine and propellers. Well, right now I'm looking at it and the ship is really starting to manoeuvre in the right direction. Actually, I'm not sure if you can hear that behind me, but it's been sounding its horn in celebration, perhaps sending a message to the flotilla of ships that it's been holding up over the past week or so. Now, of course, we have to look at the economic impact of all of this and the market impact, too. Uh, this blockage has held up about $9 billion a day in global trade, according to some estimates. It's caused big disruptions to global supply chains. Remember, the Suez Canal carries about 10 percent of global trade, uh, about 7 percent of the world's oil as well. And we've been speaking with analysts who say that even if the ship is cleared soon, it's probably going to take at least 10 days to clear the backlog of the some 400 ships still waiting to pass through. So ultimately, this mishap all underscoring just how vital the Suez Canal is for global seaborne trade and also for Egypt, which has lost about $95 million in canal revenue as a result of this incident. So I'm looking at the ship right now. It does appear to be moving. We're not sure if the ship is underway by itself or if it's being pushed and pulled by those tugs, but no doubt a significant development emerging on the Suez Canal as we speak, guys. Back over to you. Dan, really quick, before we let you go, uh, is there a sense as to how long it will take to move some of those tugs out of the way so that those 400 ships could at least begin to follow through Ever Given's path? It's a great question. We understand that the ship is probably going to have to go into mechanical inspections from this point on. Uh, it's unlikely that it's fit to sail. Of course, it's been stranded on the banks of the Suez Canal, so it needs to be given a once-over to ensure that it's seaworthy. Uh, we understand it's going to be taken north and then put into a separate holding area in the Suez Canal. Not until it passes through to that holding area will we see the other ships beginning to uh, move through the Suez Canal themselves. Uh, as I mentioned, analysts saying it could take up to 10 days to clear that backlog, and 10 days is also a pretty optimistic forecast when you consider just how many boats are out there and how much cargo they're carrying. So it's likely that this issue could really extend, this blockage could perhaps even extend into the coming days, maybe even another couple of weeks. But it looks like good progress is being made on the ground here right now. Uh, Dan, Jim Cramer, fa fabulous reporting. And I, this is a story that's captivated the whole world. But I wanted to ask you, a lot of people are saying, how come oil isn't uh, higher? The shipping companies I contacted all say, look, it's derivatives of oil, na uh, liquefied natural gas, uh, ethane. Uh, and it's not necessarily oil itself because oil doesn't necessarily go through the Suez Canal. Can that explain why we're not seeing oil spike on this? Yeah, you got it, Jim. So, look, I thought the oil reaction was interesting, right? As soon as this headline broke this morning, we actually saw oil prices falling. And that's curious, right, because normally this blockage would have resulted in a spike in prices that you've been referring to. News that the ship could perhaps be showing signs of becoming unstuck uh, sent the oil price lower. Now, the Suez Canal is not necessarily a huge conduit for oil and LNG. It only carries about... 5 to 7 percent of total seaborne supply. Uh, of course, pipelines carry much more crude. There's heaps of crude in storage as well. So I would contend that there's probably other factors that are influencing the price of oil right now. This is probably more so just a headline driven event. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.